One of the most important tools to make Smartsheet smart are automations. Automations allow users to make changes to the sheet and for those changes to trigger automatic updates and automatic notifications and changes in Smartsheet that allow one user to finish their part and for the baton to be passed to the next user. Today, we will go over what automations are, when to use automations, and how to set up an effective automation. Before we get started, an important part to know about automations is that there are many types and that we're not gonna have a chance to go over every single type, but hopefully today we can get you started with understanding some of the key automations to set up and how to learn more on your own. With most things in Smartsheet, I recommend testing them out and having a trial and error set up for yourself to make sure that you're leveraging automations well. We use automations very effectively within the tool, but we have learned that sometimes when you make a complex automation, it doesn't do what you expected. So today we'll show you a couple of those examples and make you understand how to leverage automations and to keep them simple. It should be that you can go back and find them at any time and understand how they were set up and why they were set up. When you're seeing a very complex automation, odds are the use case has changed a little bit or even the person that created it may not be able to exactly tell you why they made it or what it was for. So set it up in automation in the right way. It's going to be crucial. Let's get started. So I have set up this sheet to show you automations. You will notice that it has the normal setup of dates, drop downs, contacts, and simply text values. All can be leveraged by automations in different ways. So let's say that I want to make sure a user is notified when something happens. I would build an automation and I would set it up so that the automation is either triggered by an action that the user has done or by a certain time of the day for it to see if criteria matches and for it to send automatically. You can bring your sheets to life by setting up automations that are able to be triggered by any of those scenarios and they can keep users aware and, and keep themselves within the user's periphery, so to speak, to make sure that so among the many tasks all users have, that the sheet or the task that you're trying to remind them of is crucial and important. Smartsheet is able to help us keep organized by leveraging automations. So an automation is a specific workflow that is triggered by the sheet or by a specific time or date. Its job is to work off of the sheet's information and to follow specific rules that you set up. Similar to a macro in Excel, you're able to set it up and make sure that it happens within that sheet. Or even if you create multiple sheets, that specific workflow is able to stay because it can be templatized within your sheet. I recommend using automations when you know that a specific task could fall off the radar and you want to make sure that either yourself or other users are notified. It's very important not to create too many automations. I have found that when we set up too many automations within sheets, and especially when those sheets are duplicated, it becomes noise for the user. So you want to be careful at making sure to notify people just enough so that they pay attention and they leverage the notification properly. When a user receives a notification within Smartsheet, they're going to see it in their notifications and they're also going to receive an email. They can set up their own preferences so that they don't receive emails in specific cases. And when a user hasn't received something, that is the first place we check, as well as the firewall within that company. Let's go over exactly how we create an automation. You will notice in the options on the top left corner, you have automation right there. And you can create it from template or you can create it from scratch. As a professional, we always leverage the scratch. But to start to learn how to use it, I recommend trying to create it from a template. And you'll see there are many options like alert someone when specified criteria are met. When you click on that, you can see that there's a information on it. Any of these show you details on what it'll actually do and click use template. It is very important to label your automations in a way that makes sense later. You want to leave yourself breadcrumbs for how you create a solution. We jump across thousands of solutions and it's crucial that we know exactly how we built each piece because it's hard to remember every way we set it up. We need to make sure that we keep it consistent 
and that we've labeled it to make sense of what it's actually doing. So if you're going to make many automations, odds are you probably want to start numbering them so you can remember a numbering convention. But in this case, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to call it when the type of event is virtual. So we will call it notify user when you the type equals virtual. Now, when I see that information, I'm able to know it's notifying. I'm able to also see that I'm specifically looking for that criteria to be virtual. Now, when I'm setting this up, the trigger is crucial. I want to make sure that this automation turns on at the right time. In this case, I'm simply saying the user has selected virtual. And then I want the email to go off. Now you can see this run workflow. Usually it's best to set it up when triggered. You can set it to be hourly, daily. Um, those don't always work, work in every situation. So I recommend when triggered. You can add a condition. So perhaps you want to make sure that only in a specific case you're notified. You can not only create that condition, but you can also create multiple paths like so to say, well, maybe I want to be notified if it's this week. I don't want to be notified if it's next week and so forth. So for example, I could say, well, I only want to be notified if the end date for instance, is in the future. If it's already been assigned to me as in the past, I don't care. I don't need the notification. So you can see you can set up specific conditions to make sure that you're not always notified in every scenario. In the beginning, it feels easy to set up just steps like this. But as you develop your solution, as it evolves with users giving you feedback, you will find that conditions are crucial. So I'm going to remove that for now. And you can see here, I have selected to alert someone. If I wanted to leverage this trigger for something else, I could right click and click change action. In this case, um, using the alert is helpful. So I could hard code this to put my own name in and make sure it just sends to me every time. Sometimes admins do this. I recommend setting up to save the contacts in a cell. Oh, and by the way, there are integrations like with Slack and Teams that you can leverage with automations too. I can say send a contact in a cell and I can send a contact. Now, an important part to understand here is that the sheet is not going to notify people unless you want it to. So I can click here in the change your permission settings and you'll see that restricted is the default setup. That means it's not going to notify somebody that isn't shared to the sheet. I am able to make it limited to users within my account and then also make it unrestricted, meaning I can notify anybody. There are some cases where it's helpful to notify somebody that should not have access to Smartsheet. They can respond back from that notification using the update request and so forth. So sometimes there are cases for that, but you have to be careful because once you start using them and you put in people's emails, it will notify them. I'm going to keep it to restrictive for now. And then when it will actually be triggered, it leverages whoever is in the contact column. So that means if there's no one in the contact column, it's not going to notify. Now down here, I can customize my message. I'm able to put in the subject, it'll able to put the body in, and then I can choose whether it uses all the fields, specific fields from the sheet, like maybe I just want them to start in, for example. And then I can make it the message only. I will tell you now that all these options have been used and are effective in certain scenarios. Important part to know though, is that the user is going to receive the email and then they're going to be clicking into it to actually go to the sheet. And if you don't want them to, it's important to make sure your permissions are set up properly. So I could just put test, test, and then when I say, if I were to set up to send that automatically, I could backspace this and save it. Now it's really important that I save it without the virtual setup because I already had it as virtual. And if I were to just try to save, it would do nothing because the sheet needs to be triggered. The automation needs to be triggered by a change in the sheet. So now I click virtual, I click save, and that will send me a notification. There are many other types of automations. When I click create from scratch, you can see I can alert someone. I can leverage Teams or Slack. 
I can even generate a PDF. Request an update from a user. That means it comes out an email. The person can click on it to update, not in Smartsheet, but in a form experience, and then make the change. And it automatically reflects back in Smartsheet. I can also record dates and I can do other manipulations to the sheet. One very powerful one is to be able to lock or unlock rows. So maybe someone marks an item complete and that locks the row so they can't touch it again. And I'd finally move and copy rows. So sometimes in Smartsheet, we want to look at specific events to be types of transactions that are maybe important to be safe somewhere else. So every time a user does a specific action, we row copy it to a separate sheet and we log that change. Perhaps when things are approved, we don't want to just have to look at the cell history, which we can show in a different video, but maybe we want to have a row identified to be who did it and when was it updated every time. We can leverage that by setting up an automation to copy the row automatically. So all of these different automations can be very powerful, but you want to be careful not to do too many to your sheet. One, it'll be hard to keep organized and know what's going on with the sheet. And two, you want to make sure that whatever you set up is scalable. So today we have looked over automations. There are many more ways to set up automations. And we will dig deeper into this in a future video. But I hope this will help you get started. And if you like this content, please hit that subscribe button and watch for more videos. Thank you very much.